So we crossed this bridge yet again. As you can see, uh, transmission parts strewn about the garage. The car is in its usual about to be jacked up position. So the um, the built trans didn't quite work out. Um, it lasted a while, you know. It lasted a few few runs at the track, a few hard launches. Third gear still still let out on me. The funny thing is, third gear didn't even let out at the track. It let out on the street. Um, I was on my way to work. I went to pass someone. Uh, you know, first gear, second gear, fine. Shift to third. Right as boost kicks on, just shot straight to red line. And I was like, that was weird. I thought maybe it spun. Shifted to fourth, cruised around a little bit, and I heard the usual rattling sound. So I shifted back to third, and there was like absolutely nothing there. It is just gone. Um, so... Alright, sorry. It's a launch in a few minutes. So anyways, um... So yeah, third gear is completely demolished. It's gone. Uh, I kind of noticed a few days up to it, it was getting a little hard to shift in the third. I just, I don't know, I just, I don't know, just put on blinders and pretend it like everything was fine. Um, so anyways, yeah. Uh, transmission's gone. Well, it's not gone. Uh, it's, 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 it's broken. Third gear's gone. So my initial plan was I was going to take my spare transmission, uh, take the gear set, take the gear set out of that, and put that into my 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 air quotes built transmission uh, with the fifth gear plate and the quaif or not the quaif but the M factory uh, limited slip. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that bone stock G series in the car, and uh, I'm going to dyno it because April April something next you know sometime next month there's a dyno day, and I don't want to miss it so. So yeah, I'm just going to put the stock trans in, and I'm going to sell my M Factory diff and sell the back housing with the fifth gear plate on it and try and get back some of the money I got from buying the transmission. Because um, it's probably fine for someone making like 260 ish but I think I'm kind of knocking on that 400 number, and it's just way too much for the stock gear set. So anyways, I'm going to sell that stuff, and I'm going to do the Toyota E-153 swap. So I already bought a plate, an uh, adapter plate. Uh, I've already got a transmission, just paid for that. And so, you know, now all I need are axles, um, half shaft, custom fabricate engine mounts, RX-7 lower control arm ball joints, you know, just a few little things. Um, and, you know, a few weeks of my time, and then, um, and I should have a bulletproof transmission, but, um, that's not going to be for, oh, I don't know, I say it's not going to be for a while, but I think I'm probably going to end up getting these parts pretty quick. I got some good people helping me collect these parts, so, um, so yeah, that's the plan. I'm going to go ahead and pull this transmission out, pull the parts, see what the damage is, and, um, go ahead and put this transmission back together, this, uh, stock one and throw it in the car, um, do that dyno day in April, or next month, and then, uh, then after that I will basically park the car for a few months probably, pull the engine, and start doing the fabrication work for the Toyota Trans. But for now, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and get to uh, pulling this Trans out. I'm not gonna film, I mean I'll film it, I'll do a time, a time lapse or something like that, so it'll be whatever. Um, so yeah, super dark out here, but uh, in a few minutes there's going to be a rocket launch. So I'm gonna try and film that. Yeah, that's can barely see that. One of the great advantages of living in Florida.
Oops, lost it. Where is it? Ship balls. There it is. Three hundred millimeter lens, free handing it, so bear with me. Behind the trees. And it's behind the trees. <laughs> you can actually see the, uh, or you could see him. The little sparkles there are the solid rocket boosters as they fall away. Alright. Let's go work on the car. Now would be a good time to just go ahead and do a quick 
how-to on pulling these things apart. It's really not too difficult. I'm going to go ahead and pull this uh, reverse switch out of here. So I'm going to break that. I have another one. So you don't really need a whole lot of these things apart. You're going to get a 10 millimeter, a 14 millimeter. That's a 15. Is that loose? What the fuck? Well, that explains why that was leaking. Huh. All right. Anyways, yeah, 14 millimeter, and I believe it's a 12 millimeter. All right, so I guess first thing you can do, pull these two guys out, 12 millimeter here, a copper washer, don't lose it, and 12 millimeter here. This one keeps the fifth gear idler in place, and this one keeps the uh, shifter fork rod in place. Oh, let's get this off. Uh, go ahead and pull these out. I believe they're 10 mils. Alright, so once you get all the 10 mils out of here, it's so not bright. Why is that so damn dim? There we go. That's better. All right. So once you get all those 10 mils out, you can pop this lid off. I mean, this be the usually the easiest way. There we go. There's your fifth gear assembly. All right. Use the same size. Same size. So, holy shit. Did I not hammer those shut? Oh my god. Are you kidding me? Wow. Jesus. Apparently I never, uh. That wasn't even tight. Shit. I wonder why the transmission damn near came apart on me. Alright, so normally this is torqued down. <laughs> um. And you got another nut over here, same size, or it may be different depending on the model of transmission. This is a uh, one and one quarter. I don't know what the metric equivalent is. There's that. You can pull that off. At least I got the pin in there. Then you got a uh, roll pin right here. You're going to want to tap that out. Don't want to lose that. These little toolbox organizers from Harbor Freight come in really handy for stuff like this. And you can go ahead and you can remove the fifth gear assembly. I should probably really be wearing gloves. I try and keep it all together because it's just easier that way. That guy slides right off. A little piece of metal in there. That's cool. So, like I said, to 12 mils, 12 mil, 12 mil. I just took that out to because it's easier. It's the reverse gear. Bunch of 10 mils so that comes off. I can't believe that I totally forgot to tighten those nuts and hammer them down. That is all types of metal shavings in there. Hmm. Oh, shit. Alright, I got all these 14s. Actually, if you want, you can go ahead and pull this one out. That 
comes out. There's a spring in there. And there's a little detent, a little ball. Well, you probably won't get that out, so. Hold together with RTV, and that stuff is in there pretty good. I find that right here is a really good spot to pry with. <sighs> ah, yes, yeah, always a pain in the ass. See what the damage is. I'm kind of excited about this. Ooh, that's pretty. Yeah. All right. Here's a uh, what's left of third gear attached to the magnet in there. Ooh, that is some good crunchiness right there. So for those of you watching, just trying to figure out how to pull your transmission apart, hopefully this isn't what you find inside of it. So, uh, yeah, uh, you can see third gear, or what's left of it. That's, uh, as you can see, there's really nothing left of it. And some broken teeth on this side. Yeah, so uh, that's what happens when you put a uh, more than 300 horse through a, a G series transmission. All right, so um, at this point, what we'll do is uh, I'll show you the rest of the way of how this comes apart. Now, there's two ways you could do this. Um, I'm going to show you what I think is the easiest way. First thing you want to do is you're going to want to remove this uh, reverse gear idler. It just Sometimes it just slides out. There you go. Get that guy out of there. That's your reverse gear. Or that's what engages reverse. Then you have a, I believe it's an 11 mil. Nope, it's not an 11 mil. Maybe it's a 10 mil. So that's 10 mil. Remove that guy out of there. Then you can remove this fork. And all this stuff are this this rod. Just gonna put that back in there so I don't lose her. All right. So in order to get these gears out, like I said, there's two ways to do this. Um, one way that I've seen involves removing. There's a little pin that holds this shaft in. That's kind of a pain in the ass. The much easier way, like you can. Get the gears up, get it into up there. You can hammer that pin out, and you can slide this rod out, and you can take the gears out. I think an easier way to do that is this guy actually comes out pretty easily. So if you can get a grip on this pin here, if you can see that very slightly, but yeah, there's a little pin here. You can pop that guy out. Once you pop that guy out, Give this a little twist, and it should work this guy out. There you go. Then you can pull that out. And with that removed, there we go. So yeah, um, once you get that guy out, you can pull the shift lever back, and then this just pops right out. So now that that's out, you can get this out. Now when you remove this, uh, there's um, 
a spring and a ball bearing in there. So the way I like to do this, there's a little hole in here and I like to just stick that in there and that takes the tension off that spring and then you can just lift the whole gear assembly Kind of lift the whole gear assembly I think I should have shifted these up a little bit Maybe they need to be shifted down. Ah, damn it. It should just come like straight out. There we go. I'll just remove that. Not the best way to do it, but whatever. But there's your shift fork assembly. There's your ball bearing. You want to save that. And then you can get this out of there. Shit. Alright, I guess the springs are different. Another tooth there. So the springs are different. Yellow spring goes in that first 14 millimeter that came out. The black spring goes in the detent for the shift fork assembly. Now that, that is all like that, we can clear a spot. Oh, so elegantly. And I should be able to lift this out. Is that oh that's why all right so before you get that far <laughs> there's two more 10 mils right here this these guys that's why I don't like doing instructionals because I really suck at doing them sometimes so before you get that far 10 mil 10 mil and this little sprout all of this is this just delivers fluid to the gear set pull that out now you can pull that out. So, yep. So as you can see, third gear is gone. Oh, where did all that come from? It is completely and totally boogered. You know what I always find amazing? Is that when these things break, it's always the teeth and not this ring here, all that power is being transferred through these, these little tiny little teeth. When that slides down and locks that in place, that's where all that power is being transferred through. And these little fuckers never, sorry, YouTube, these little guys never break. But the teeth, the much larger teeth, always shear off. It's always weird, I don't know. All right, so, so yeah, that's how you pull one of these guys apart. Like I said, my original plan was to clean this case out, um, swap all this stuff into here, but uh, I'm not going to do that. I think, like I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this uh, differential and that, possibly this front case, up for sale for anyone that wants it, try and make back some of my money, and uh... Just run this stock transfer for a while. Yeah, this M Factory diff is still in great condition. No damage. Like I said, maybe going up for sale. My fifth gear ring I broke. Or my speedometer ring I accidentally broke. God, there's like entire... Oh, there it is, down there. Alright, so yeah. A couple of more teeth on the magnet.
busted her good this time. I don't know, I may still consider swapping the guts, but I don't know, I just, it's... This doesn't seem like a lucrative idea at this point. So... So yeah, um... M Factory 28 Spline LSD along with the 28 spline axles. Well, yeah, along with the 28 spline axles and and the intermediate shaft, which is the inter the 28 spline uh, intermediate shaft is really hard to find. So, um, so yeah, M Factory diff 28 spline intermediate shaft 28 spline axles and. Um, a uh, rear half G series housing with the uh, fifth gear plate are up for grabs. So for now, I'm going to go back to the stock G series and start collecting parts for my uh, E153 swap. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and end it here because um, it's late and I just don't really feel like uh, <sighs> I don't really feel like uh, filming anything else right now. So. I'll get this guy thrown back together, and next video, I'll get it back in the car. Or, I mean, I'll even film it. I mean, it's pretty mundane stuff. Anyways, till next time.